don't know about you, but I always want to be inspired. I want to, you know, get that extra spiritual caffeine in and somehow take something out of nowhere and suddenly feel like everything is coming up roses. You know, like those songs that you sing from the Broadway musicals. Everything's coming up roses for me and for you. <laughs> you know, I want to I be like that. Don't you? Don't you want to be inspired at times, you know, to be more than you are? To find that, you know, place where God takes His Spirit, you know, and kind of touches you inside and says, Hey, guess what? You're mine, and I love you. And that kind of like motivates you, you know. Or maybe you're you're like one of those people that you know loves to get those love songs, you know, like, oh, how do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I love thee more than the sunlight and the days. I love thee more than the night and the stars. I love thee like the skies. And you know what's interesting is that being a poet, every time you look at that little inspirational thing, you know, that people say, you know, how do I love thee? He never says, I love you. <laughs> that don't seem like inspiration to me, but it is a good feeling, you know. I kind of like being inspired, you know, because inspiration can take, you know, ordinary things, you know, like paper, you know, and make them into something useful or something, you know, inspiring. Now, I like to inspire people because, you see, I'm a poet, and I've written lots of poetry, you know, and I used to write it on the spur of the moment, you know, kind of like, Today, I guess I would say that I have something to pray that every day in any way with which I may say that I could inspire you today to give to you a way that you may be inspired every day that you might have that which you don't know so that any day, every way, any which way you can, you can be inspired by that which God has done. And that's kind of sing-song inspiration in a way and it's for the moment, but you know, if we wanted to do iambic pentameter and Shakespearean sonnet, you know, I could probably sit down and write it and then read it to you. But, you know, I do like, you know, doing um, inspirational poems, you know, and kind of like, you know, those pictures that you see on the Internet, you know. I like to pass them on to people, you know, and to give them a little bit of joy, you know, a little bit of inspiration. You know, it's kind of like, oh, you know, a, a quick thrill, a quick fix, kind of like that, yeah, moment, you know. And, you know, you could do that. You know, that's what God wants to do with you, but... There's also something that you should be doing for others. You know, you should be going out of your way every day to inspire someone. You know, I would like to challenge you, you know, because that's kind of what we're supposed to do as Christians, you know, is to challenge each other, you know, like, uh, I think you need to get in shape, so I'm challenging you to, you know, lift 20 pounds. <laughs> 20 pounds? All yeah, right. I have a hard enough time getting out of bed. <laughs> but seriously... You know, we're supposed to inspire each other to go after the prize, you know, to run the race a little harder, faster, quicker, you know, go for the gusto, you know, kind of like that stuff. The same way that you get inspired by your television set, you know, or your iPods or your, you know, whatever it may be. God wants to inspire you every day through creation. You know, he gives you sunrises, sunsets, stars in the sky, you know, and moon rises, you know. Sometimes some really unusual things like comets flying through and flying by and, you know, kind of like, you know, solar storms just to wake you up, you know, to say, look, I'm just trying to inspire you, <laughs> not scare you. And I don't think everybody gets that picture sometimes that God wants to every day walk with you in some way. He wants to talk with you every day and inspire you in some way. So when you do get, you know, this kind of relationship with God going, you know, where you're kind of like, you know, you're reading and you're studying and you're praying and, you know, you're doing your religious thing, you know, and you're doing what you're supposed to do, well then, maybe you could take some time, you know, like, do the little things, you know, that inspire others, you know, wash the dishes, wow, what a shock, a man washing dishes, oh boy, and he ain't getting paid for it, man, that's unique, that's inspiring, <laughs> isn't it? Or complimenting someone, you know, when they're trying hard. You know, sometimes inspiration isn't just the unique thing. Sometimes it's the commonplace things. God meets me every day in little ways that I need it. You know, like, I get discouraged at times, and I write lots of encouraging things. I 
do lots of inspiring videos, you know. I play games with God, you know, I enjoy my relationship with him, but I get down, you know, and sometimes God sees it, you know, and when he does, he just sends me these little goofy things, you know, that just make me happy, you know, and that's what you can do. I'm sure that you have a relationship with somebody somewhere and that you know some little thing that they like. Why don't you, you know, go out and try doing that today? Why don't you try to, in some way, inspire someone to something? You know, inspire them to a smile or, you know, maybe just be the goofy person you are. You know, like, don't you love me? You know, I tell my wife that all the time. It's like, <laughs> just so unlike me, but she just reacts to it that I just... It inspires her in some ways, you know, it's kind of manipulation in a way, but it's inspiration for her. You know, I just go, Mom, don't you love me no more? <laughs> you know, and it's just like, you know, you get all, <laughs> and it's fun. So, you know, you know, guys, you got your own little love talk, you know, to your love life, you know, the lover of your soul, you know. Well, be goofy. You know, God loves that. That's why Jesus said, call God Abba. He says, Talk to daddy, you know? He's like, God, you know, help. <laughs> but you can have that kind of intimacy and reality of letting your walls down. Because that's what inspiration does. It lets you be less or more than you are. Because everybody knows what a jerk you are. <laughs> but inspiration makes you into something more <laughs> a christian wow cool and you know that's kind of what the christians are supposed to be like the salt of the earth and the light of the world we're supposed to inspire others you know imagine that inspiring and not perspiring over religion inspiring and not perspiring over just gospel inspiring people to do more and act in a way that's better for themselves i think that's a good idea you know, I like watching movies, you know, I really do. I enjoy the movies that, you know, just, they have, you know, American movies, though, usually most of them have happy endings, you know, they're like very inspiring. And some of the good movies, you know, inspire you, you know, you're like Don Quixote or, you know, To Dream the Impossible Dream or some love story, you know, and it just gets you inside. But, you know, I remember when I was a kid going to high school. It was fascinating at the time because, you know, I was studying human characteristics. I was discovering that everybody out there was just as sensitive as I was, you know. Now, I always thought that all these men were macho men, you know, and I grew up with emotions. I knew feelings, you know. Feelings, you know. I had my feminine side and my masculine side, and then I discovered it was a God side, so I didn't worry about it. But I found out very quickly, you know, that men know how to cry, and that men could be inspired. Shocked the shorts out of me, and I'm wearing shorts. But the reality was was that I was in charge of the videotape library because in those days we had videotapes, big giant ones. And I was in charge of the library and I used to go to school before school started to record, you know, different movies and things that, you know, we had a special account, you know, for education. And for the football team I was recording this one movie, you know, and it uh, was going to be shown that day in class, you know, because it was you know, kind of a special day, and it was a special movie, so it was uh, played, and it was in this kind of experimental school at Norco, you know, so we had no walls and stuff, so it's a long story. So anyways, I put the movie on, you know, and it got silent, and it was never silent in school. Then you could hear this kind of like sniffling and crying and kind of like sad stuff, you know, and you know, the whole school was kind of like really, you know, kind of like brought together, you know, in one way because, you know, there was, each one of the teachers gave this little story afterwards, you know. The movie was Brian's song. And, man, first time that it was ever shown, first time that it was ever on TV, boy, I was shocked at how inspiring that was to everyone in my school. People were amazed. So, when you find a movie, share it. You know, like some of these movies that are out now, like Courageous, you know, or or fireproof, you know, some of the Christian movies that have, you know, kind of like that inspiring part, you know, hey, share it. Or even other movies that are inspiring, don't worry about it. God can use it. I used to get, believe it or not, inspired by flash dance. Imagine that. I was going to accomplish for God. <laughs> but 
I just wanted to share that moment of inspiration with you because you got to use what you got. You know, you you can't use what you don't have. You know, if you if you don't have much, then just be inspired by the little things you can do. Even football. <laughs> Touche. It's a touchdown. I mean, little kids learn how to be inspired with the simplest of things. And I can tell you this. I remember every moment of inspiration from my childhood upward. And I remember that when Mr. Cunningham inspired me to be a writer, I remember the speech that he gave me. Stone? I didn't give you an A. I gave you a D because I knew that if I gave you an A like you deserved, you'd never be a writer. I hated that man. <laughs> it was a good thing he was my tennis coach because I hated that sucker when it came to English. <laughs> man, flunked me, almost flunked me in creative writing. Of course, it made me into the writer that I am, you know, and thank God he did, but I was too good at writing. <laughs> but inspiration can do that, you know. Some person will stay out and stand out in a person's life for the rest of their life. Some action you do may overcome everything else that you've ever done in a person's life if you just inspire them. That's what we want to do in this series. We want to start talking about inspiring people, you know, and doing things that make points, so to speak, or make someone rise out of their depression and sadness, and instead of being a bully, be an inspiration. Instead of being a beat-down person or a gang or separating yourself, you inspire people to come together in some wonderful way. You know, like, you've seen it. What about all those times where they kept showing that TV show, you know, the one with the car and the bus, you know, and they redo the home, you know, it's home makeover. you got to admit, that was pretty inspiring. Couldn't you do a makeover for someone of their attitude? Couldn't you like do your own little kind of thing without it having to be about money? And maybe inspire someone to go on when maybe they're like at their last breath? See, we're in the last days. We're in the last gasp, so to speak, of mankind's existence of self-rule and self-determination. Pretty soon, within the next 10 years, going to be over. And when that happens, before it happens, people are going to despair. They're going to be hopeless. They're going to start looking at the darkness and getting really bummed out. Kind of like what this little economy burp, you know, that we went through. We always go through these at election years. But, you know, when everybody was like, oh, no, you know, the economy's ending, you know, and we don't have any money and no jobs and all this is going to, you know, fall apart and, you know, we're going to become no nation, you know, whatever. You know, that kind of depressed a lot of people, you know. People got carried away about how bad they thought it was, and you just went through it again, you know, just like we've always done. So maybe you could be, instead of one of those, you know, like doom and gloom people, maybe you could be inspire and maybe be a Christian and shine your light. Because I think maybe if you took a little bit of time to just think about it, you might be able to figure out a way to inspire someone today to, you know, maybe not be so worried about the things of the world, but maybe worried about just having some fun. Because after all, Jesus said, come to give you life and life more abundantly. I am with you always, even until the end of the age. And if Jesus be with us, man, you think we really got anything to worry about? Not me, man. I think I want to go out and inspire someone. Matter of fact, if I go catch some rays and get a suntan, you know, maybe buy some candy and some flowers, maybe I'll inspire my wife. Okay? Maybe forget the suntan. I think I'll go get some flowers and some candy. I think she'll like that.